Welcome to Basic Brewing Video. I'm James Spencer. I'm Steve Wilkes. This is part one of a two-part series, we hope. <laughs> so unless it gets canceled. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, I think we're going to call it Seed of the Pants Party Guile. Yes. We've talked about Party Guile Brewing before on the uh, podcast, on the video. Mm -hmm. What is Party Guile Brewing, Steve? It is getting two beers or more mm -hmm. out of a single mash. Right. So the idea is that Really, it's a very ancient kind of way of brewing because grain was really expensive. Um, the equipment was hard to come by, like brew pots were really expensive. Metal cost a fortune. So what brewers would do is they would, they would make a mash. They would pull the first runnings off, which gave them a big beer, mm -hmm. lots of alcohol. Then they would remash or just reflood the mash at the grain and pull another runnings. And in my extensive research, <laughs> I found... <laughs> that they would do this as many as four or five times wow. with the same grain. And of course, each beer would be progressively less alcoholic so that you'd go from a, a big giant beer down to something that you might drink all day long and right. still be able to drive your oxen to work <laughs> <laughs> and not rear end someone else's oxen. So you'd have this big old beer that you'd use for special occasions mm -hmm. and then you use a slightly smaller one for like maybe every week and yeah. then like a daily beer a daily or a like breakfast beer. Because water was not uh, always safe in those times. That's so, right. You know, people drank beer all the time. But they didn't always get smashed. No. So uh, uh, so your approach to this party gal brew, uh, my approach is probably be a little bit more OCD in that I would be <laughs> I would probably be trying to figure out you know, how much volume of water to put in and how much gravity, I, how, you know, how much sugar I was going to pull out of the first runnings and then how much water I should you know and I would probably have a lot less fun than you're going to be having you are going to be kind of more off the cuff explain yes. your approach I'm lazy <laughs> <laughs> no here's the deal if I was doing this commercially and I needed to replicate to, to uh, make the best use of everything that I've got because mm -hmm. of financial reasons and I wanted to be able to duplicate what I did mm -hmm. I would be very careful about how I uh, figured everything out. What's my, you know, what are my ABVs going to be? What is my grain bill? What's my hop? All that. I don't have to worry about that. I'm a home brewer. I'm doing it for fun. The thing that I really want from this brew session are a couple of nice beers that I can share at Christmas time, which is about less than a month away now. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the, the big beer may not make it, but the little beer probably will. And so my idea is that I'm, I've built, I've got this big grain bill for a five gallon batch. I've got 15 pounds of grain. I'm going to mash it up as though we are doing a traditional five gallon batch mm -hmm. or standard batch for most of us home brewers. I'm going to pull the first runnings. I'm going to see what that gravity is, see what it's going to give me to work with. I'll, I don't know what my hop schedule will be yet because I don't know, you know, I don't want it to be too hoppy or not hoppy enough. And uh, then in the, in one of the two beers, before I boil the wort, now the, now the base beer, let me back up, the base beer will be a very pale beer. So the grain bill is Golden Promise, Wheat, and Belgian Pilsner, or Belgian Pale, Belgian Pale. So, uh, you know, a very kind of nice uh, bland, for lack of a better word, but you know what I'm saying. Not roasty. Not, Not roasty, yeah. you know, uh, and so then to one of the two beers, I can add specialty grains, as my heart desires. I've got some black patent malt and some chocolate malt. I could add some brown sugar. I could add some molasses. I could make a stout. I could make a porter. I can go in a lot of different directions with it. I'm just going to let the beer tell me what it wants to be, and that's what I'm going to make. Well, there you go. There you go. Well, before I forget, which we've already done, Mike from Kelseyville, California, has sent us a beer. Yum. So thank you, Mike. Yep. And uh, Mike is a member of the Maltos Falcons and Malt Canocti Mashers Homebrew Clubs. He's been brewing. Why don't you open the beers right. for the beer while I'm talking? Uh, he's been a brewer for 30 years, and he sent us some other stuff that we're going to enjoy off camera. Indeed. But uh, this beer is a cherry chocolate imperial stout with Ooh. real cherries and real chocolate, 11% ABV. So that may influence the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the brew day. <laughs> we'll see what we get. It's one of his seasonal home brews. Cheers. Cheers.
Oh, oh my, my goodness. gosh. That's like a chocolate covered cherry. That's good stuff, Mike. Thank yeah, you very much. Yeah, thank you so much. My goodness. All the way from Kelsey, Kelseyville, California. So what we're going to do, we're going to enjoy this, but then what we're going to do is this episode, we're going to follow the progress of the first beer, the big beer. Right. And then next time, when we come back, we will follow the progress of the smaller beer. So wish us luck, and here we go. This is, this is the full mash for the party guile. Let me tell you what I'm doing here as I do it. I've got six pounds of Golden Promise. I've got six pounds of Belgian Pale. I've got two pounds of malted wheat and one pound of malted rye. That's right here. This is kind of like malt meal. Avoid the dough balls. Avoid the dough balls at all costs. Now some people add their add water to the grain. We add grain to water. Do people really add water to grain? Yes. I wouldn't do that because you get dough balls. I mean, apparently not. Apparently not, but apparently some people say it's better to actually add water to your grain rather than add your grain to your water. I've, I've never tried it. I've never run across those people. I've never tried it, therefore it's wrong. <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. So we have uh, done our mash. We've pulled our first runnings. The first runnings came out to be 1074 in uh, gravity point. Is it gravity points? Specific gravity. So we've pulled our first runnings <laughs> and they came out to be 1074. And I've just, I've got those on the uh, stove right now. The first runnings, it's about, there's about two and a half to three gallons of beer there, of wort. And I'll boil that down and add some hops to it. I'm uh, heating up the, the sparge water right now, which is be three gallons of sparge water. I'll reflood the mash. I'm not going to remash the grains, though I could. But that's just wh this is where I'll add the uh, specialty grains, a little bit of chocolate malt, a little bit of uh, black patent malt. So I'll get a, a porter esque beer out of the small beer. But that's a sporter, a sporter, sporter? a spoiler for part two. <coughs> yes, it is. <coughs> We've also been sampling a little <laughs> well, bit. Yes, we have. But so okay, so we've got the first runnings on the stove. Yes, come over to here come look to at the, those, James. to come to the boil. Come on, look at these. And they were tasty. I tasted a little bit. Yes, and uh, you actually did the gravity reading. Yes. So, uh, ten seventy four. Ten seventy four. I'm not going to do a thing to this, but I do need to think about how am I going to hop this up because yeah. ten seventy four needs some hops in it, or it's going to be kind of you know over the top on the malt. So I've got some uh, Amarillo, and I've got some Chinook, and I've got some other kind that I can't think of. Cascade. Yes, and some Sriracha Ace. That's the word I was coming. Oh my goodness. That's what I was coming okay. Up with. So I'll I'll do a hop schedule on this. I'll think about it and think about what I want to make, and we'll get back to you. All right. So we've come up to the boil, and now it's time to add some hops. I'm going to add a half ounce of Chinook hops to these guys, and this is just a pellet hop, and that'll give us a nice bitter in this two and a half gallon batch. So what you're thinking, what's the character that you're looking for in this big, it's a barley wine. I mean, we're talking, you know, it's a big old barley wine. And, yeah. and 1074, that's pre-boil gravity, so it's gonna be pretty big. Yeah, it is. It's gonna get uh, more and more alcoholic, and yeah, I just want a kind of nice English barley wine. I'm even thinking in the secondary, I might add a little bit of Christmas spices to this. I won't do it now because I'm still thinking about it, but I could certainly add, certainly, I could certainly add some, <laughs> some ginger to this and some uh, raisins in the secondary, which would give it a really nice Christmas, kind of a fruitcake-y thing going. Be nice. So spoiler alert, in addition to boiling the, uh, the wort for the, the, the big beer, Preview to next episode, steeping is going on in the second beer. Yes, indeed. So we're steeping the, the little beer with some uh, chocolate malt and some black patent malt. So we'll end up with kind of a porter-esque beer. So we're, we're, it's essentially shooting the, the, the second and third episode of, a, of Back to the Future at the same time. Yes. And I, I don't know, I can't, I've lost track of how many times I've used that reference already. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, there you go. Two beers going at once. 
You know, this is the beauty of the whole thing. It's kind of, it's kind of the whole point, in my opinion, is that I have one brew day. I don't have a lot of time to do this. I, I would like to have a couple of nice beers to share over the holidays. I don't need a tremendous amount of them. So I'm okay doing a five gallon batch, essentially, but I'm going to make two completely different beers. Do you like that? Yes. I'm going to make two completely different beers out Exits of this. Exits in the rear. <laughs> Exits to the rear. <laughs> and the oxygen mask may drop, but don't worry if it doesn't uh, inflate. And <laughs> um, but this is a nice way to get two completely different different beers going. And there you have it. And they'll wind up over here. Yes, in our two and a half gallon fermenters. So I've got an ounce of Sriracha Ace hops, pellet hops. Oh my gosh. They're so lemony, they're just wonderful. This is a great hop. I'm gonna add this at flame out, so flame is out. Add the hops, gonna chill this down, that's it. And what, what, what's the uh, yeast that you're gonna be adding? This is another twist. It's another twist. I'm gonna add this as he unveils it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a US05 starter that I made last night. It's about 14 or 15 hours in fermentation. Or yeah. And it's doing its thing, and so it's very active right now. How long did you boil that? 15 minutes. This is I call this Amarillo Slim Starter. How, mu how much Amarillo? It's one ounce of Amarillo, one pound of dry light malt extract, one gallon of water. So that's essentially, that little thing right there is a smash beer. Yes, it is. This is a smash beer. A late, ha late hop smash smash. <laughs> it's a late hop smash beer. Yes, it is that you have brewed there and you're going to add what you're going to swirl that up I'm and what add half of that to the i'm going to add half of it to the big barley wine and half of it to the porter so that's amazing so there's our bit there's our first beer yep we got our we got our sriracha ace and chinook big beer 1074 original gravity we'll add about a half a gallon of this starter to it just swirl it up and, and pour it in once it's chilled which should add some Amarillo character as well. Absolutely, it sure will. And because it's a late hop, you know, 15-minute uh, boil, it won't add a lot of bitterness, but it will add that, that real citrusy Amarillo character to it. Right. Uh, flavor, not bitterness. Right. Awesome. So tune in to the next episode to see what's <laughs> going on here. That's right. And get out of the Wayback Machine, Mr. Peabody. <laughs> Mare! <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, everybody! Cheers! Come and visit us on the web. At basicbrewing.com, you can find archive lists of both our audio and video podcasts on home brewing. You can also find our DVDs, extract brewing and partial mashing, stepping into all grain, low tech lagering and decoction mashing, introduction to wine kits, and our Basic Brewing Brewer's Logbook where you can track and log up to 50 batches of beer. Drop us a line. We'd love to hear from you. Write to james at basicbrewing.com, steve at basicbrewing.com, or just use the contact form on basicbrewing.com. This time of year, I can store beer and food outside, and nobody <laughs> but the raccoons care. <laughs>